Hi, my name is Javier Albernoz, and today we'll be talking about frequency processing in Audition. Frequency processing refers to equalization or EQ. It's used to boost or cut specific frequencies or broad groups of frequencies, and it can be used to make extreme changes to frequency spectrums or very subtle changes. Some of the things we'll take a look at are the cutoff frequency, gain, bandwidth, low pass, and high pass filters. I have an empty Adobe Audition session open, and the first thing we'll do is load an audio file and work inside of the waveform editor. So here you can see that I have Media Browser selected on this left middle window space. This is also the same space where we're going to look at our effects rack. But for now, we need to open the Media Browser, browse for an audio file that we'll be working with, and then we can simply drag that in to our main editor window. And because we are in the waveform view, we are seeing the entire waveform of this single audio file. Now this is a mono dot wave file. So you can see here that we're just looking at one channel of this audio file because it's mono. If you take a look here at the files window where it shows the loaded files, you can see that other than the file name and the file type dot wave, we can see the information such as duration, sample rate, mono as I mentioned. It is 48 her, uh, 1000 hertz or 48 kilohertz and it is a 24-bit file so we're ready to get going now that we've loaded that file so here in our timeline the first thing we'll do is cut off some of this excess silence at the start and at the end of our file so we don't need to worry about any other detail editing, like really finding where the start and end should be and some fade ins, fade outs, other things that you would do when editing your dialogue. Uh, because right now we'll just focus on seeing how we can EQ or use frequency processing for this file. So let's go ahead and click on effects rack here, because what we're going to see here are this list of 16 different effects insert slots that we can use to load various effects. So in our first slot, you can see here, if you click this drop down tab, you're going to get a list of all the uh, Adobe Audition plugins that you can use. But if you have any VST, VST3 or audio unit plugins loaded, they'll also be down here. So we're going to work with EQ. So this kind of frequency processing is in the filter and EQ folder. So let's go ahead and load the parametric equalizer because this will be a good way uh, to visualize the different concepts that we'll be discussing in EQ. So let's take a look at this window. You can see that it does mention it's a rack effect or insert effect and its parametric equalizer. So this is going to affect our audio here that we have loaded in our waveform editor in real time as opposed to an offline process. So the first thing we'll look at here is what we see in our display. In an EQ you're going to be viewing on your x-axis down here you can see that these are frequencies or pitch it can also be referred to as. In this case we are seeing them in the value of Hertz so we are going to go down and start from around 20 Hertz which is more or less where the limit the lower limit of human hearing is and up to the upper limit where you see right here 20,000 Hertz or 20 kilohertz and there is some extra room up here but it's a pretty uh, widely held standard that 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz would be the upper limit of human hearing. 
So on your Y axis, you can see it listed here, you're going to see in decibels the gain or the volume. And if you uh, are above the zero line, then you are boosting a specific frequency by a certain amount of decibels or you are cutting if you are below. So as you can see along our zero line on our x-axis, we do have various nodes and you see that they're numbered and these numbers match here along with this L and H which stand for low pass and high pass filters. So uh, what we're going to look at is how we can manipulate these nodes to EQ our audio file. So when you select this node, we'll work with two, you can see that it lives over a certain frequency. And in this case, we are at 200 hertz, and you can see that listed here. So when we move uh, along to the right or to the left, you can see that we are moving along the frequency spectrum and changing what frequency we're affecting with that node. Uh, so when we increase our gain, we are boosting 200 hertz by this amount of decibels that is shown here. In this case, I'm at 4.7, or I can also cut by more or less the same amount and at the same time choose what frequency I'm affecting. Now the other thing that is very useful when working with these nodes is the bandwidth or sometimes known as Q. So this means the width of this node and how much it's affecting when boosting or cutting, how many frequencies are encompassed in that. So you can see here that the Q is this bar right down here, this row. So right now, this Q, when we uh, move to the right and increase the Q, you're going to see, rather on number two, the one we're working with, you're going to see that it does thin out this curve. So you can see that now we're going to be really only affecting a small amount of frequencies with the center cutoff being at, right now, 213 hertz. If we go the other direction, you can see how we're going to widen this. And if we go all the way, we're pretty much just doing a flat uh, boost of all frequencies. You can see that there when we go to a Q of zero. So let's leave it at a more moderate bandwidth. And let's see what the effect that this uh, EQ has on our audio file. So let's play it back without any EQ. The purpose of this virtual reality experiment is to show that standing forests are very important for the survival of indigenous peoples who depend on natural resources. Great, so let's take our uh, cursor back to the start of the timeline. And we can see here that as the audio was playing, we are seeing the different frequencies as the audio file plays that are part of this recording. So let's go ahead and boost at around 200 hertz and see what effect that has. The purpose of this virtual reality experiment is to show that standing forests are very important. So you can hear that by boosting 200 hertz, we're bringing up this part of the speech where it gives it kind of a boxy sound. So let's do the opposite and let's cut at around that same frequency. So we're cutting, as you can see here, 9.9 .9 decibels at 202 hertz. For the survival. Let's take it back to the start. The purpose of this virtual reality experiment is to show that standing forests you can see how it really thins it out so i'll play it back now and i'll sweep some frequencies uh boosting them so you can hear the different frequencies that make up this recording the purpose of this virtual reality experiment is to show that standing forests are very important for the survival of indigenous peoples who depend on natural resources so you can hear the effect of EQ and how it can really uh, make a huge difference in the sound of the speech. When you got up here to where we ended, 
were at somewhere above 6,000 hertz and you can hear how it was really making a difference on all the S's and H sounds that are in the speaker's uh, recording. So let's go ahead and put this back to about a nominal rate, uh, back to as close to unity as we can. There we're at zero decibels. And we can take a look at what these uh, shelving filters at the uh, extremes of our audio spectrum are. So rather than being a node, just as these other uh, one through five nodes are here, uh, this shelf here, this is a low shelf, and you can see here that it's referred to as that because it's kind of like, as we boost, it's kind of like a shelf where every frequency below that node is going to be raised, or in this case, lowered. So that can be very useful in this case, uh, maybe getting rid of sort of air conditioning sound or room tone that might be in the recording. And we're going to cut you make this cutoff frequency lower than any of the actual speech, any of the words and any of the frequencies in the words that are going to negatively affect the audio, but really we'll just focus on getting rid of maybe that low frequency rumble that might be in there because of air conditioning or even a truck driving by, depending on where you were recording. So you can see there that on the opposite end, we do have a shelf that will be our high shelf, which can serve the same purpose for boosting or cutting all of our different frequencies at a higher uh, range. So if you click down here at this icon, you can see that what we're doing is really changing the slope of that filter and how harsh it's acting. And uh, it's really having the same effect, but just at a steeper slope. So you can really cut off and, and make that even uh, uh, a, a, a steeper effect on the frequencies that you're shelving, either boosting or cutting. Now, one thing that you can also do is, in the case of what we're doing now, this is known as a high pass filter. We're high pass filtering because what we're doing is only letting high frequencies pass. Now let's play this back. The purpose of this virtual reality experiment is to show that standing forests... So you can see how a lot of this material here, and you can see it jumping up, are very important. We're really survival. cutting all of that off. So that's why we're getting such a thin sounding vocal. Now, the same thing over here, I'm going to use the steeper slope, we're going to do the same. And now we're going to make this a low pass filter where we're only letting lower frequencies below this cutoff pass through. So now if you kind of place it around this area over here, you see how we kind of get that telephone sound effect. Of indigenous. The purpose of this virtual reality experiment is to show that standing forests are very important for the survival of indigenous peoples. So if you really play around with that, you can see how you can start to manipulate uh, the dialogue using EQ or frequency processing to get an effect that approximates maybe a walkie-talkie, a radio, all kinds of different uh, speakers that have different bandwidth and allow different frequencies to pass through so you can emulate those speakers. So let's take a look up here at the various presets because you do have, there's not many, but these are good starting points that might help you understand maybe what, you're tr what you might need depending on what you're trying to process. So we'll go to full reset, which just flattens it out. You can see how all my nodes are gone, right? But you can simply enable these down here by clicking and as you need them, you can add nodes. So let's check out some of these other presets where let's say we were working with an acoustic guitar. This is a suggested uh, preset, 
for working with a recording of an acoustic guitar. Now, of course, this isn't set in stone and you would have to work with this, but what they are doing is kind of bringing up, giving it some shine here on the higher end, maybe taking down some of this mid lower range stuff to uh, maybe get rid of kind of any boxiness that might be in there and then lowering some of these ultra low frequencies again probably at this cutoff of 40 hertz you're kind of getting rid of anything any rumble that doesn't need to be there but still leaving in these low frequencies for the lower strings of the guitar now this isn't going to make you know a, a massive <laughs> difference in the sound of this dialogue but it, it is meant for a nice curve for a guitar the purpose of this virtual reality experiment is to so other presets that might be here most of these are music based you've got heavy guitar for a kick drum high pass and low pass we were just talking about um, but here we have old time radio so you can see here how they really worked to shape this and kind of mimic that uh, radio sound by really boosting up here in the middle right below 1k but dropping out other frequencies let's take a listen the purpose of this virtual reality experiment is to show that standing forests are very important so you can hear how it loses all the low end we get this kind of very boxy sound here and it really loses all the high-end sound and it, it does mimic that old-timey radio kind of sound so that's great for working with uh, uh, dialogue where you need to affect it to give it that sound so uh, if you needed to go back again to your standard EQ where you haven't affected it you can always click on full reset and go back to your original view Keep in mind that in addition to the filter, keep in mind that in addition to the EQ plugin that we were just using, Audition does offer various other ways to use EQ to manipulate your audio files. You can see here in the list, we were using a parametric equalizer, which parametric means that it is an equalizer that you can change the node cutoff as well as the bandwidth and you have full uh, control of all the parameters sometimes this is called fully parametric and there are semi-parametric uh, eqs as well you can see here that we have graphic equalizers with various bands if you see the 10 band graphic equalizer you can see here that you do have uh, your cut and boost, but the frequencies here are fixed and you can see that they are doubling, which is the equivalent of an octave in musical terms. So we're going all the way down from around 31 hertz up to over 16,000 hertz or 16, kilo, uh, 16 kilohertz. So you can also change the range of how much uh, you have for cutting and uh, boosting and of course your master gain now if 10 bands aren't enough you do have the option of choosing your graphic equalizer with more bands so the entire frequency spectrum is split into a finer resolution as you can see here so you get three times as more individual bands now, other than that, you do have other options here, notch filter, scientific filter, FFT filter, and they all approach the process of uh, frequency processing or EQ in a slightly different way. So it's good to check those out and see how they affect your audio files.